This is Sergeant Chris Ripson with Tennessee Highway Patrol. Pedestrian safety is a two-way street. Both drivers and walkers need to do their part to keep roads safe. When you're walking, remember, the drivers may not always see you, so remember to use these tips to continue to walk safe. Wear black clothes. Always use crosswalks and obey signs. Lights and reflectors should be used. And finally, keep alert and do not walk distracted. This message is brought to you the Tennessee Highway Patrol. CJ Used Appliances, located at 3530 Jackson Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances have the best prices in town. Sales and service, heating and air. Also the best appliances you'll find anywhere in the Mid-South. Refrigerators, uh, microwaves, stoves, washers and dryers, deep freezers, dishwashers, whatever you need in used appliances. And folks, I'll tell you, they're the best used appliances anywhere you'll find. That's CJ Used Appliances, 3530 Jackson Avenue. All appliances come with warranty. You can call them at 901-487-7882. Again, 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances. Big Graphics Printing, located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, a complete print shop for all your printing needs. They do it all. Color copy, resumes, funeral programs, rubber stamps, full color business cards, wedding and graduation invitations, and more. 30 plus years of quality work and service. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, Tennessee, 901-345-9294. See graphics printing. CNS Motors Auto Sales, located at 2508 Summer Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901 323 8778. CNS Motors Auto Sales has been around since 1984. Go by and see Chris today for some of the best pre owned and used vehicles in the city. They have SUVs, minivans, cars, trucks. Whatever you're looking for in pre-owned used vehicles, hey, you can find it right there at CNS Motors Auto Sales. See, Chris, since 1984, they will treat you right. Call them at 901-323-8778. That's 901-323-8778, 2508 Summer Avenue, CNS Motors Auto Sales. This is Sergeant Chris Richardson with the Tennessee Highway Patrol here to explain the Tennessee Hands-Free Law, which is a new state law effective July 1st, 2019. In Public Chapter 412, it makes it illegal for a driver to hold a cell phone or a mobile device with any part of their body, to write, send, or read any text-based communication, to reach for a cell phone or mobile device in a manner that requires the driver to no longer be in a seated driving position or properly restrained by a seatbelt to watch a video or a movie on a cell phone or a mobile device, and to record or broadcast video on a cell phone or a mobile device. So, can I still talk on my cell phone while driving? Yes. A driver is permitted to use an earpiece, headphone device, or a device worn on a wrist to conduct a voice-based communication. A driver may use one button on a cell phone or a mobile device to initiate or terminate voice communication, and voice-based communication may also be used to send a text message. Learn more at handsfreetn.com. This is Sergeant Chris Richardson with the Tennessee Highway Patrol. Pedestrian safety is a two-way street. Both drivers and walkers need to do their part to keep roads safe. When you're walking, remember, the drivers may not always see you, so remember to use these tips to continue to walk safely. Wear bright clothes. Always use crosswalks and obey signs. Lights and reflectors should be used. And finally, Keep alert and do not walk distracted. This message brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Patrol. CJ Used Appliances, located at 3530 Jackson Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances have the best prices in town. Sales and service, heating and air. Also the best appliances you'll find anywhere in the Mid-South. Refrigerators, uh, microwaves, stoves, washers and dryers, deep freezers, 
dishwashers, whatever you need in used appliances. And folks, I'm telling you, they're the best used appliances anywhere you find. That's CJ Used Appliances, 3530 Jackson Avenue. All appliances come with warranty. You can call them at 901-487-7882. Again, 901-487-7882. CJ Used Appliances. See Graphics Printing, located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, a complete print shop for all your printing needs. They do it all. Color copy, resumes, funeral programs, rubber stamps, full color business cards, wedding and graduation invitations, and more. 30 plus years of quality work and service. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Located at 890 East Range Road in Memphis, Tennessee, 901-345-9294. See graphics printing. CNS Motors Auto Sales, located at 2508 Summer Avenue here in Memphis, Tennessee. Call them at 901 323 8778. CNS Motors Auto Sales has been around since 1984. Go by and see Chris today for some of the best pre owned and used vehicles in the city. They have SUVs, minivans, cars, trucks, whatever you're looking for in pre owned used vehicles. Hey, you can find it right there at CNS Motors Auto Sales. See, Chris, since 1984, they will treat you right. Call them at 901 323 8778. That's 901 323 8778, 2508 Summer Avenue, CNS Motors Auto Sales. This is Sergeant Chris Richardson with the Tennessee Highway Patrol here to explain the Tennessee. And good morning again, and welcome to Talk Back Live in the morning. It is now eight uh, nine sixteen, uh, sixteen minutes past the hour of nine o'clock Central Time, and we're a couple minutes late there. And a very pleasant good morning to you on a Friday morning. Yes, a lovely, wonderful Friday morning, and starting your day off at eighty-four degrees under mostly. Cloudy sky, a beautiful day to start your day. And I tell you what, we have a great show lined up for you today. Hot topics of discussion, news that you can use, local, national, international. And the number to call is 901-213-6020. Again, the number to call is 901 213 Six zero two zero, and also you could uh, watch us uh, and listen to Facebook Live. We're on there right now, and people are coming in. Yes, thanks for coming in already. And also you could uh, listen to us live 
on the Spreaker app. That's S P R E A E R. That's S P R E A K E R. It's a free download on your mobile devices, computers, all your computers or or desktop, laptop, whatever you want to uh, download it on, and uh, you can listen to us there as well and give you more information about the Spreaker app as well. Good morning, Josh. <clears throat> Good morning, Bob. Good morning, everybody out there listening, watching, tuning in wherever you may be, however you may be checking us out, man. We definitely yes, appreciate y'all indeed. for doing so again this morning. A lot of stuff we want to get to today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so y'all stick and stay, man, as always. Also, uh, as Bob said, man, you can on multiple ways. Uh, Bob brought up the Spreaker app, which you can definitely download on any device you may have, as uh, mm-hmm. you just expressed there. But also, you can follow us on Twitter at Talkback Live. One word at Talk Live. Also, Facebook, Facebook.com, Talkback Live with Bob and Josh. Mm-hmm. Like our Facebook page, check us out there. Uh, as you mm-hmm. are watching us, uh, a lot of you are watching us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. currently uh, as well so y'all be sure and check that out um, also share the videos and the different things that we have on our Facebook pages mm. uh, so uh, that's about it man also many podcast outlets as well where you can listen to the show after it's over mm-hmm. uh, Spotify Google Podcasts and the iHeartRadio apps uh, three of the biggest apps in podcasting you can check us out just search Talk Back Live mm. and you can check us out. Yes, indeed. They can check us out after the show and you can listen to us as well if you missed the show or if you want someone else to listen to the show and miss the show as well. All right. I tell you, Josh, we have a great show lined up. Let's get it on. Let's do it. In the headlines today, we've got well, it is a Friday, folks, and it is uh, what July almost well the mid or after the mid the July area heading into the end of July the end of July it's July and, 24th yeah it's almost the end of July here and July August the, the uh, 31st is coming well you know there was an eviction thing set up uh, that people could not be evicted for a certain period of time is it right is it wrong? well let's talk about it We have a story this morning that talks about evictions, those during the pandemic uh, situation when it first started and people were working and then people were laid off, uh, then people couldn't pay their bills, their utilities, people couldn't pay their uh, whether it be IE home or business establishment, so on and so forth. Well... There's a lot of things going on across the nation about that, and locally as well. Uh, August the 30th extension for those in Memphis and Sheffield County uh, that have not uh, paid the rent. The uh, the courts are not going to do that until that particular time. And why? Is it right for the uh, people that are leasing or renting the homes, or is it right or wrong for the owners that can't get their money. They feel they're old right now, regardless of what's going on. Uh, are the owners, uh, are the owners, uh, must they have or sympathy to people because of the situation? Or should the owners just say, hey, this is my property. I own this property. This is mine. I can, uh, evict people and I can do whatever I want. I don't have to have or feel sorry for people because of any situation going on. They're still living in the home. 
this is a very touchy situation. What is going on here? So, um, as you explained, man, the, what's going on with evictions now? As you know, with the pandemic and everything that's been going on, uh, it's been kind of a subject, I guess you could say. Um, because whenever you talk about somebody's home life, right, or you know, the place that you live, it's a very important subject. And for people to get thrown out, especially under these circumstances, where one, you have a lot of people who don't have a job. Two, you have the pandemic going on with the virus that is spreading across the country. Mm. And then these families, again, really going back to the jobs, are are lacking in the funding to even be able to pay their bills, let alone rent or anything else. When does it should it come into play? The, um, the compassion aspect of things because business is always hard, line, right? Business, business is business. Oh, oh, and you have to pay what you owe, regardless. That's usually the hard line of a lot of uh, landlords or business well, people in general. Well, some people would say that, hey, you know, it's not that I'm avoiding the landlord or the the uh, property owners, it's just that I've been paying to this moment. And because of this pandemic, this situation yeah, that's going on across America, I suddenly cannot pay. Well, clearly And this not. is what yeah. people are saying. Yeah. Are, or is it that people are taking advantage of this and not paying their rent and keeping for them and, and, and say, hey, you know, uh, they're giving away rent time now and for allowing it to happen, so therefore, whatever's going on, therefore, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, take advantage of the situation and say, uh, hey, I can't get the rent as well. Is it? Uh, is it uh, you know what? I can't even, and, and I, I understand this, like a lot of people are asking everything, but here, here's the... But you so, cannot punish people that are yeah, legitimately... That's the, that's the bottom line. Uh, you know, cannot pay for those that are... You know, uh, and, and are, look, are, uh, get on the bandwagon and can't afford to pay, but they're taking advantage of the system. So what do you do? Well, look, he, you know, he, people always like, uh, you know, people that are advantage of this or that. That's going back to even food stamps, right? Taking advantage of the system. You're going to have people taking advantage of every system. It just is what it is. Um, and for folks to sit up and act like, well, people need to stop giving people food stamps because some people take advantage of the system. Mm. Or we need to lick people um, if they can't pay because you don't know if they're trying to take the system. What system are you trying to take advantage of if you're not paying your rent intentionally? This doesn't make a lot of sense. That means you don't want to live in your house? I don't think there's a lot of people that are out there intentionally trying to not pay the rent because there's really only one consequence mm. and that you're going to lose your place of living. Mm. So and that's just my thoughts on it, but, yeah. but nonetheless, so, but there are people that what I'm saying is there are people that think that way that yeah. hey, we need to throw everybody out or whatever. But look, I think you have to take into account what's going on, mm-hmm. and I cannot see, you know, anybody that is a decent human being, um, throwing people out at this time. Mm-hmm. A lot of people ain't, don't even have their jobs. Some people can apply for unemployment aren't even getting the money they're supposed to get. You're coming up to the end of this whole uh, $600 Hmm. stimulus that's extra added to uh, the unemployment checks. Yeah. And some people have never gotten that. Yeah, well, that's what I hear. Some people had not even uh, gotten that. I mean, all over the place. Yeah. But uh, what what do you do, folks? What do you do? What do you think that should be done in this situation? Uh, The landlord... I need money. Some landlords are still property. Other landlords own the property straight out and don't owe anything. Uh, it doesn't matter though. It's his property. It's her property. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. But the people that are there because of the situation now, they're in a dire need. And but yet, can you look at it? Hey, before this, they were paying. all of a sudden they're not. They cannot pay. They say so. What? Do Let's take a listen to the story and uh, 901-213-6020. Josh, let me know 
the radio, uh, with the store, and uh, folks, you call us uh, there, or you can leave us on Facebook, and we're going to spread as well, which you can listen to us. Uh, good morning to uh, Tim Smith. Tim, What's up, Tim? Checking in. Kelly, uh, Hank, JKP, Jake, JKP, Jake, JG. GKP. GKP, that's what I say. Good morning, Frankie. Welcome this morning. Uh, Albert. Albert, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, Albert is really responding on these things these days. And Tim and uh, some of the other people here, are, they left Tim left a big We'll get to your messages in just a little bit after this. Uh, uh, yeah, it's coming up. In news conference here uh, that uh, is about to play here. Uh, eviction. What do you think? And uh, we'll read those in just a second. Uh, 9, 2, 1, 3, 6, 0, 2, 0. And uh, so we'll get that in just a moment. We have other uh, topics we we'll talk about today. Mm -hmm. tr attempt or try to talk about it if we get a chance uh, uh, to talk about it. That uh, we'll give you those topics coming up in just a little bit. It is Friday and last day of the week uh, for us. And uh, so, uh, Josh, are you ready? Uh, let you know in just a second. Uh, uh yeah, okay. Hey, you can go uh, ahead and read the comments. There's no reason. Yeah, to okay. Back All right. Uh, go back uh, over these uh, comments and and read some of this stuff here. Albert uh, says, "Good morning." GKP says, "Y'all already know who it is." I'm sick of that. <laughs> All right. I don't guess he care anyway. But anyway, Frankie, happy Friday, everybody. Mm -hmm. Friday to you, Frankie. It's always a pleasure to have Frankie join us uh, on the show here. And I'm pretty sure she has something to say as well. Uh, GKP said that in the headline today, see, he's he's picking what I hear. Uh, Hank, uh, welcome. Uh, good morning, Kelly. She says, good morning, good people. And Tim, what is the landlord to do when he gets payment, property taxes, and maintenance on his property? You must go. I'm not going. Yeah, he's broke. Like, you must go. Meaning you must go. I'm not going. Tenor, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you say, hey, if you're a landlord, you, you, you must go. I'm not. You can have a roof over your head. Well, he's saying if you're a tenant. Yeah, that's what he you said. Gotta go, yeah. You gotta go. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yeah. He said if you're a tenant, uh, the, let me read it again. Tim says, "What is Lord to do when he has a mortgage payment, property tax, and maintenance on his property?" Good question. Now, then he Tim, then Tim says, "Hey, if you're if you're a uh, uh, Lisa or a lawyer, yes, sir, he yes. says you must go." I'm not going to going broke. I'm not going broke so you can have a place over your head. Gotcha. Wow. And, 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 I, and I understand some landlords still owe take a monthly payment. So some landlords say, hey, I'm charging you rent every month to make a payment on my account. So if I don't get your I have to face the bank and say, hey, my uh, land, my uh, that are renting didn't pay me this much, so y'all gonna have to wait. The bank's not gonna want to hear that. Well, here's my question. Okay, if you throw somebody out, you get what I'm saying. Uh -huh. if, if you make an eviction, it, does that mean your mortgage payments stop? Do you no longer have to pay a mortgage if you evict? Oh no, somebody? no. See, you I, I, I know. Yeah, that's a fact. So my point is, and I get what Tim is saying, but if you evict somebody, what is that gonna do? It, on the one hand, you at least have somebody that's trying to pay you. You evict. Somebody and now you have nobody you have no chance mm -hmm. and then you have to try to rent it again well i, I, now, I guess I, it i guess it depends i'm assuming here uh i guess it depends on how far behind that tenant is yeah how many months behind they are mm -hmm. on the rent because it's so deep in the hole that you feel like you have no other choice and he's already lost a lot on them mm -hmm. so he don't want to keep the, on the property uh you know so i don't know Gotcha. Uh, okay, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's a thought. But that, that's. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I'm still like, hey, 
if they're not exceedingly behind on their rent, I've, it's always been my thought. I don't really, it doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. You're still going to have a loss. Nobody's there. Well, I guess. Because nobody's paying. Well, the thing about it is. He then you got to fix the place up again. Yeah, you got to fix it up. And then he's got to, you know, pay for other people to lease it or to rent it. And then, uh, then you've got the people to rent the property uh, and all that kind of. But there's a lot of people out there looking for a place to rent. Especially if it's a good place, a good location. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You but, know, so. But that was, takes time. Yeah. Okay. Call from Tim. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's good morning? What's going on, guys? Oh, it's a long Friday. Time. Yeah, yes. man. What's up, Tim? Tim, where are you from? You from Chicago? Chicago. Well, 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 yeah. Actually, <laughs> I'm not too terribly far from you guys. I'm working down in Huntsville. Oh, okay, okay. Huntsville, uh, Alabama. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so so you know uh, the. The, the person's comment saying maybe he can, you know, take less tenants at, that, at one point in time to be able to cover cover other people. And, you know, several I know several people in real estate and hold rental property, corporate, rental, all kinds of stuff. A uh, good buddy of mine, he owns properties, and he's in a great he has a great equity position, great financial position on his house. But he's also been working for about fifteen years. Only, okay, uh, right. So his reward is pretty good right now. If you look like, look, look at his, you know, his equity status. Mm-hmm. Now, coming from someone who used to own a, and that was just me. I had one. Yeah. And, some, and not everyone wants to be a landlord and own 30, 40, 50 houses or whatever it is. Some people have one or two houses that they were able to get at a decent deal, but still have mortgage. I live. Mm-hmm. If I were to rent my house out right now, my property taxes are four thousand dollars a year, wow. but rent only yields about thirteen months. Okay, so if I even if I even if I if I leverage the property at sixty dollars, I would still have I would still have my four thousand dollar a year property taxes, mm-hmm. my twelve hundred dollar a year insurance, and then and let's even just call it a three or four hundred dollar a month payment. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't have. There's no room. I have no room. Mm-hmm. I am now paying for someone to live in that house. So it's not, I mean, I, I know it's personal to the person that, that's getting kicked out, but it's not personal. Maybe I've invested my money in property for my own, reti- I don't have a retirement at work. So mm-hmm. what have I done? I've invested into a piece of property or two to rent so that when I go to retire, I have something to cash in and sell mm-hmm. so that that will carry me or help carry me through retirement. It's not all what you think. You know, it's not always the uh, the uh, the real estate system you see uh, on late late at night or, uh, <laughs> or or on Facebook or the guy standing next to Rolls Royces and palm trees. Yeah. You know what I mean? Being yeah. a real estate millionaire, <laughs> yes, those people are definitely out there, but overwhelmingly, they're not. Yeah. They're, yeah, I, I mean, most that. people that oh, I believe. That. I'm sorry, go on. No, yeah, I, I agree. I, not that but you, you, I, I actually 100% agree with that, Carl. Paul, uh, hang on, hang on. To send a voicemail, press two. You gotta hit one. To accept, press one. Okay, I sent the caller. Bye. I wouldn't just. They're just gonna have to. Okay. Yeah. Are you? Is there anybody out there? If if you do call in, yeah, you're just gonna have to wait. Hello. Um, Yes. Oh, sorry about that, dude. Oh uh, God! Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that was that was. was it, that's it's it's not always. And every landlord uh, that owns it, or you know, a big investment company, uh, or um, you know, someone who owns fifty properties. Now, I know another investor that mm-hmm. my uh, friend of mine had rented from, and you know, she she buys. Property. Okay, you going in and out there? She. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, she puts money. She puts money into them, and she takes the spread basically from what it's worth to what it uh, to what she has in it, and then she refinances those and takes the now. Now her, she probably owns sixty properties, and and makes an absolute fortune on them. She does a lot of the Airbnb, and she does corporate rentals. So her properties are 
are we're not talking about most of them are not just you know normal term and stuff like that mm -hmm. but but the, the game she plays is completely different mm -hmm. you know and and like i said the economy goes south and people stop paying she does what they she has she works with a huge group of investors. okay and then what they call her sales so she would sell everything and make a million million and a half dollars in a week mm -hmm. and um and then start over you know or most people though they don't most people aren't like that most people you know um you know grandma passed away I, the, you know, uh, I acquired the house, uh, you know, from my parents or mm -hmm. something like that, or right. the family at a good deal. I rented it out. That's going to be a retirement program. It either, either I get dollars a month off of rent, or I'm going to have the house cash in on some. You know, I, understand. I, you know, the people I had living in my house, and you know what, they were incredibly nice. Mm -hmm. But they fell on uh, the, the the wife uh, had some medical problems. Was in the hospital. They started, you know, uh, they were strapped financially, and then they slowly started. Hey, and let me tell you something. There was I had several thousand dollars of my out of my own pocket mm -hmm. that went into that house. My taxes and and, and a mortgage never stopped. Mm -hmm. And All then right. I finally I finally got to the point where I, I had to stop bleeding. And they were nice people. Right. And I understand. But now, Tim, let me ask you this. How do you feel about eviction? Like you got a lot of that going on. Um, you know, if if as a owner or somebody that owns a home that's renting or whatever, and they're putting a ban on eviction, time, are you okay with that? Uh, yeah, that uh, the, that that's, uh, that that's a tough thing. I, I I'm not for it because like just like I like I yeah. said, you know, someone who only has one or two properties. What they're literally going to go into foreclosure because you can't you can't evict these people. Yeah. Well, the, and then those people that are saying that they don't own the property, they're not offering to pay part of your uh, a part of the rent mortgage or mortgage right. or whatever do on the home. You see, so right. Uh, it's it's so yeah. It's it's good to, for them to sit up in a place and say, okay, you must not evict people for the next two months and all this kind of stuff and and. Uh, uh, but yet, uh, it's a different situation. I would say, I would say before you did, I would say before you did an eviction ban, why don't you? Why don't? Why doesn't? Um, why doesn't that state uh, change their their public assistance program first? Those people can either you know get the that they need it, get some assistance that that instead of driving businesses out of business. Yeah. You get some help so that I don't. If I have two houses that I acquired from family members or however foreclosure it is, okay, but I have mortgages on them. Yeah. So it, both of those, and let's say I make four hundred dollars each, not an uncommon amount of money. Yeah. Again, I'm looking long term. So mm -hmm. when you look, you know, when you're when you're in the marathon, I'm looking for the fifteen twenty years that mm -hmm. when the house is paid for and then is able to you know either pay me monthly a, a larger chunk. Or and get the money. Hey Tim, we, we appreciate you calling, man. We have other people calling in, and uh, yep, we'd like good. to get Tim. Hey, it's been a good, good pleasure stuff, to talk man. to you. Got a good perspective. Yep. Hey, Take care, guys. Yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks man. You can call back later. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> call. Welcome to the show. good morning on the. Well, good morning, Bob. How are you? I'm doing well. Got yourself. Fine. What about you, Josh? Man, I'm good, man. It's Friday. I'm feeling good. Yes. Bob. Yeah. What should have happened to just me about mm -hmm. this tenant the last three or four months? The, the same should have had to you, the spokesperson, to help these people going through hard times so they don't. They, they do not get evicted. Well, Why didn't they get you to, to help them, Bob? I don't know, Carl. Why should I? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, no, I'm, I'm saying, I should the contact me? Is what Bob, the way you talk and that voice you have, people will follow you, Bob, and you can wisdom on how to handle this problem. You're going to hit the mess right now. Yeah. Well, you just heard Tim. Uh, Tim was talking about own property call, and uh, you uh, people were owed you 
and then you let them go for two or three months, and and uh, but yet, Carl, you still have to pay a mortgage on the property. You know, they're calling for money. What you do? Uh, some landlords don't really have the money from month to month to say, okay, I'm going to pay this uh, notice uh, if the land if the uh, renters cannot pay, and uh, you know that type of thing. So they're depending on the money, and they're waiting on that money from. The people that rent their property, and that's what I, I can I can understand because Tim. That's why I love you know hearing the different perspectives on these things, especially from you know Tim who's been you know homeowner and yeah, and actually had to evict people that were in an unfortunate situation. And knowing Tim, and like you and, said, I, he didn't do that knowing uh, the situation. Well, but it comes down to the situation well, and, where and, he and has I, no choice. And look, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah. at the same time, the, the reality of it. Is he's led the family? He had some medical issues, and he had to evict them. Now, look. Well, now, and, see, and I, 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 okay. I don't have to speak okay. for him because okay. we heard what he said. Now, yeah. here's the thing: I'm not saying right or wrong, but what I'm saying is, you see both sides of the spectrum. You see, from Tim as the homeowner's point of view, having to evict a family that he actually liked and said that they had medical issues going mm-hmm. on and they could not afford up the payments anymore, right. so he had yeah. to let them go. Now, no, 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 now, 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 because we did have a yeah. listener that asked Tim the question. Mm-hmm. You no, know, was was you know was, was reluctant. Yeah. He says, "Man, you gonna evict somebody that have medical problems?" What he said, so you threw the sick people, sick people out. Yeah. What he said, mm-hmm. man, you threw sick people on the street, knowing that they were sick and they, that you know the reason they couldn't make any. Uh, at that particular time, because they were going through a sickness, uh, so I mean, so a landlord is really just stuck in a between a rock and a hard place here uh, by leaking. Well, but, but 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 I don't think they are stuck in a harder place than the tenant. They're in a harder, and in my opinion, they're in a much more position mm-hmm. because look, landlords have to pay people. To but at the same time, you know, the people actually has a place to live. Yeah, but see, that, 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 that landlord has a place to live. Number also, one. Also, that yeah, also that property he has yeah. is like a place for him. To live. He's just not living there. He's out of renting it out to someone else so that he can pay that bill. Let's say the place he's living in, if he has a bill there, then he has to pay that bill to the bank. At the other place, just because he's not living in it, it doesn't mean that he still don't have to. He he still don't have to pay the bank. He still have to pay no, the bank. Absolutely. It's just it's just that now instead of one place to pay the the uh you to the uh I'm the whatever what saying, the yeah. rent or, or whatever he yeah. owes on the on home now he has two homes he has to pay. He's gonna have to pay. The landlord's gonna have to pay. Every and I'm going to jump in for a second now. Yeah, okay, I, I, hold on. I, let me get this point across. Yeah. The landlord's going to pay. Because uh, I get you. Yeah, the landlord's going to have to pay whether the rent, the people that are renting the home pay or yeah. not. Yeah. Now, all that aside, that's yeah. all nice and true. But here's the thing. You don't live in the house. And it's a little more serious. It's your home at stake. That mm-hmm. ain't his furniture. That ain't his kids in that house. That ain't his house. I mean, it ain't. Well, look, it's his house because he owns it. But they live in there. It's a little bit more serious when the ones getting put out on the street. The landlord is not getting put out on the street. A lot of financial interest in that house that affects him financially. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he has no stake in it because he clearly has it. But at the same time, one again, when you throw a family out on the street. Does that make your mortgage more payable? No, because you still have to pay it with nobody in the house. Mm. I almost think it would be better to come up with some sort of the people that live there own mm. if that family really cares about it. If they Now, if they're one of those people that don't give a about paying a care, right. then you need to throw them because it is what it is. Lord probably need to do a check. Okay, you are you are you without a job or are you do you still have have a job? Just going under this uh, 
uh, situation everybody else is saying now because of the pandemic, they should have mercy on you. Well, I, I mean, he should follow, see if they're actually doing any work somewhere. And, uh, and but yet, yeah. you know, uh, 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 it's the landlord's property. You know, and and, and then again, it, it it depends on who. I get that. Their mercy. How and I know we got they feel too, yeah. and call. You know, and you know. What, what, do you think, what do you think? What do you think? Well, based on what we have seen, the last the government got money. All this money come out of nowhere for this and this and that and this and that and this and that. That should have been something done if the government should put their foot down and say, hey, we got a virus problem here that's going across the United States of America. Mm-hmm. We're not going to have suffering and lose their home because of this virus. But the landlord need their money. We're going to form a commission quickly and figure out all these landlords apartment complex and who they are associated with banks. You're not going to affect these landlords during this time. We'll put in the arena until we solve this problem. We need three to four months. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the landlord won't lose his money you won't lose your money because we pull the back end, and the people that live in the apartment complex won't be kicked out. However, then we'll go there and find out who our essential workers can pay. They will pay. You follow that category too for at least three or four months till we solve this problem with the virus. Yeah. And why did I say three or four months? New York have proved you need to shut this thing down for three months. All this mess still happening now. You look at uh, New York don't have this problem anymore. Why? They shut down three months. Mm-hmm. In those biology where a virus situation occur, knows you have to shut down quarantine people for anywhere from 45 to 90 days. You got to kill the thing so you can't spread it. But when this, this stuff starts spreading out like it is now, it's never going to catch up. But they done with it. Nine days this thing happened. We won't be in the mess we are now. Therefore, the government should put their foot down the first nine days and get kicked out. Landlord will lose their money, and people who can pay, pay. And that's what you do. And now, okay. you know, so, um, now, you know we had the um Carl, we got my man uh, KP says, so basically, in other words, what Carl is saying is, keep it simple, it's basically what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Maybe the call in and offer some reasonable situation. Reasonable ball. I get this KIS thing. I like that they care about me. feel honored to a certain degree. Yeah. I mean, you you know, yeah. most people feel honored to all this show. Yeah. You feel honored uh, when you call this show. You really, really need to thank. I uh, uh, really feel uh, pro. Uh, you're not. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Well, good grief. <laughs> well, Bob, you know, Bob, you know what I want to do. Yes, sir. I'm going to add it to my bucket. I ain't going. I ain't going to find out your. That line with Bob and John from 9 to 11. Okay. Then I'm going to vacation, bring you some strawberries so you can eat your strawberries on during Talk That Live with Bob and John that day. Call can now. you make that happen, call, Bob? Call, call, I remember last even a few, a few years ago. You bring me some strawberries, but call this time when you bring them. Let let them be fresh. Strawberries. <laughs> no, don't bring me no rotten strawberries, call. <laughs> uh, 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 so, strawberries so, look like they've been you know, sitting on the shelf in the store for for three. Oh, come well, on. Well, Bob, you know at that time, at that time, time was hard. You had to. You can pay. Yeah, times the times are hard. Times are hard. Don't bring me no strawberries. Just wait to, <laughs> to time. Okay. Well, call, yes, sir. you have to 
until 2021 to do that. Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate your comment. Again, are you going to give the local at your show, or you'll keep that quiet? Uh, well, at at this present moment, uh, you're you're not welcome to be a guest. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but, but hey, yeah. but hey, we'll keep you in mind. Yeah, we'll think about you. We'll think about you and then release. You. All right, call. <laughs> Thanks for calling, man. Thanks, we appreciate man. it. Really do. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Bye bye. All right. Nine zero one two one three six zero two zero and. Uh, yeah, that was called. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple, stupid. Baby. Yeah, and that's something. What do you think, folks? <laughs> Should the landlord uh, uh, should the landlords be a little more merciful, or should the landlords kick people out of their property if they can't pay their rent? Just throw them out. Or there are some uh, uh, landlords that are merciful, and they go as far as they can. Yeah. You know, and uh, now if we can, but uh-huh. now I do have that story that I wanted to play. Yeah, now we can play some of it, not all of it, but some of it at least. Yeah, um, and then we'll be take a listen to this and back. Uh, and phone lines are open 901 213 and or you can leave a message to Facebook everywhere you message you. All right, take a listen to this pandemic we hear it repeatedly from public health officials stay at home but many americans don't have stable housing and as william brangham reports a growing number of people are being forced out of their homes because they cannot make rent payments like thousands of americans right now Rhonda anderson and her family are being evicted stress going is hard they can go outside let's back up last december anderson's family was excited when they moved to North Carolina. She and her husband had both found good jobs and this nice rental home close to work. And three months after they moved, the pandemic hit. Anderson's husband lost his home restoration job when the virus and the shutdown dried up these projects. My husband filed for unemployment, didn't get no unemployment. So basically it left me in a situation to do stuff by myself try to keep food in the house, and try to pay the rent. Rhonda took on extra hours at her job. She's the head cook at a local nursing home. These days, she's working up to 75 a week, but it hasn't been enough to make rent on time. I've been in this situation before anyway. Never. After paying the rent late in April, her landlord told her she was being evicted. I'm asking, like, how is you going to evict her? To be still paying our payment. He said, I just I want y'all out of there. And we didn't know. Oh, the baseball pitches. Yeah. The landlord said Anderson paid her rent several times, violating her lease because her 20 year old son wasn't on the anymore. He had come live with her when his college closed because of the pandemic. The CARES Act, the coronavirus was passed earlier this year, halted evictions for anyone living in properties with federally backed mortgages, but that only applies to a third of renters nationwide, and it's higher July 25th. In addition to the federal, most states put a pause on all of the pandemic first hit, but those rules postpone evictions. If tenants violate their rental agreements, landlords can still evict them once the moratoriums expire. And that's exactly what's happening now to people like Anderson. When South Carolina let its moratorium expire in May, it saw a spike in eviction filings, says Charleston attorney Nicole. What we're seeing now is a significant non-payment of rent cases, and a lot of that is related to people during COVID-19, during the shutdowns. It's really kind of a perfect storm. Princeton University's LeVar Edmonds studies evictions. He says they were problem before the pandemic. The last 15, 20 years, you can see rents have been increasing considerably, whereas incomes have remained relatively stagnant. 2018, one in four in the U.S. put more than their income towards rent. And about half of renters have less than a thousand dollars in savings. They're paying rent, but they're sort of on the edge of something goes wrong, and now we've got a problem. 
what's pushing many renters over that edge, economic fallout from the pandemic. One survey found up to a third of all renters able to pay rent in April. That's causing housing advocates to warn of what they see as a worst-case scenario, a spike right in the middle of this outbreak. Expose more people to the virus, end up in shelters where it's very hard to socially distance. But Boston Medical Center Dr. Mandel says not having quality stable housing is also tied to other problems like food insecurity and increased stress, and that can in turn trigger long term physical and mental health issues. An affordable home is a prescription for health, and nothing showed that more than during the epidemic. And so now is the time to on stocking that housing prescription. In many aspects of this pandemic, people of color are also most vulnerable when it comes to housing. Hispanics in the U.S. are likely to be renters as whites. And in the pandemic, black and Hispanic workers are more likely to have lost jobs as well. Black and brown renters are disproportionately likely to be extremely low. They're much more likely to be severely cost burdened. Diane Yentel is president of the Low Income Housing Coalition. As we look towards this potential wave of evictions that's coming, um, that too will disproportionately harm black and brown renters. The states and cities are already using federal money for rental assistance, but housing much more is needed. Earlier this year, Houston's $15 million fund was tapped out to applicants. Landlords are pushing for more rental assistance too is the executive director of Mass Landlords, a trade association in Massachusetts. And landlords don't like to evict their paying customers or, or their non-paying customers. We want to have customers and we want to have people occupying housing. Quattrochi says when rent isn't paid, small mom and pop landlords like him struggle to pay their own bills. Even though there's a, a uh, we still have to pay for repairs, we have to pay for insurance, uh, real estate taxes. I members are insolvent and are selling their buildings to get out of the business. Another 20 Because of this pandemic? Because of the pandemic, plus the resulting shutdowns and the eviction moratorium, not anymore, and, and they're done. After going to court, Rhonda Anderson agreed to a deal with her landlord. The landlord would apply for CARES Act rental assistance to cover the missed June rent and eliminate the house at the end of the month. But the eviction wouldn't go on her something that could have made it harder to rent in the future. But the quick move meant her family had to go to a hotel. Fortunately, it's only temporary. We found a place, but it's not open up after the, the holidays, so we have to stay in a hotel for like eight days. So that's how life at now. And as evictions pick up across the country, that's how life could soon be for thousands more Americans. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham. Okay, uh, 901-216020. What do you think of the... Uh, that was a lot of uh, information. Man, that was a lot of information and there, yeah. You know, uh, should the uh, land evict during a situation like this pandemic or, or hey, uh, someone says, hey, they have a mortgage, they, they have to pay mm -hmm. that mortgage on that home, and, uh, you know, and some landlords uh, just don't have a, a lot of money and they're depending on the uh, renter that's in the home to pay that rent so that they can uh, pay the, the mortgage on their home, on that particular home. Uh, now, somebody said, well, if a landlord on a home uh, and can't afford a home and he owes on the home, then uh, he probably don't need to be a landlord. He probably needs to own some property or at least uh, six to, you know, of uh, payments, or he's already paid on something. But at any rate, and it's the thing of the matter is some people yes. looking at the property belongs to yes. the to the land the landlord. Mm -hmm. um, and then during situations like this, you look at things a little different and uh, have a little mercy or concern about people that <laughs> have jobs and their income and yes, and they can't afford to pay. Yeah. So all that being said, it's and it's a lot. Um, yeah, I think it was a lot of information to to add to it. Kind of what we talked about, what Bob brought up in the mm -hmm. 
it's then August 31st, not July 20th. It's been the update because Shelby County, yeah. Shelby County mm-hmm. in particular because tomorrow was that day. Right. And all that was going to be uh, ended. But all that being said, can you imagine? Think about how this affects. There's such a ripple effect, and you can see it in this story mm-hmm. um, with evictions. And people don't realize. And I think a lot of people do, especially people that have been through it. But even if you haven't, evict people on your record. And that makes it tougher to get another place. So when this stuff happens, when, think about it for, for black families or like their people of color or whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. Families that struggle, she's working all these hours. Mm-hmm. The husband applied for unemployment after losing his job. Couldn't afford, couldn't help any of that happen. Mm-hmm. It was nothing that was under their control whatsoever, and did everything he was supposed to do to get unemployment. Didn't get it for whatever reason because of the unorganization, disorganization of our government system. Mm-hmm. Then the woman is working as much as possible, getting all this much seventy five hours plus. A week. Right, and That's a lot of hours one week, and still paying the rent. That's what gets me though. They actually were still paying this late, month to month. Yeah, the money was still coming. So to me, that landlord to was me, being and, ridiculous. Yeah, was being as long as he was getting some money, uh, and it was it on time. You know that that's you know you have all, all type of, of landlords. Uh, you have because I heard of that, a lot worse situations than oh, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She was still at least paying him money. He was getting, just maybe. A, Maybe a and you know and you know uh, and I think a lot of this uh, me personally mm-hmm. now personally I, a lot of this uh, late stuff, you don't pay by the what fifth or, or whatever tenth mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be then you know we're you're late, you're gonna and. If you don't pay by then, we're going to charge you another late fee. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. my point is this. What good does it do to charge a person that is renting late fee to you what they, uh, owe, what they you owe in the first place? In the first place, and, yeah. they're, and they're running late on that. At least they're going to give you something. Those that, that are, are uh, you know, that cannot, uh, cannot pay at all, and you charge them late fee. All that's gonna do is put them deeper in the hole. Mm-hmm. Why do people? Why do you think people charge fees? Is it uh, uh, is it really called for to charge people fees? Any situation, not during this pandemic. Any situation, yeah. Is it necessary to charge a late fee? Uh, uh, why nine zero one two one three or leave your comment? There's a lot of comments. Oh yeah. Go, yeah, yeah. It, I'm, I'm gonna go. And then, uh, I guess, and it's a great point you're talking about the late fees, though, because mm-hmm. if you think about it, what what sense financially does it make? Even if you're the landlord or the business owner, whatever it is, right? What does it make to consistently add bills mm-hmm. to somebody that you already see can't pay what you already or that is struggling mm-hmm. to pay what is already there? Mm-hmm. So, what makes you think you're gonna get this late fee? Yeah. You're well, not getting any extra money. Like, and, it's not and, helping and, you. And at then all. there, are, then there are some landlords, you know, that don't uh, charge land fees at all. Just say, hey, uh, uh, you know, if you give me uh, a person brings in, uh, you know, uh, what it, uh, let's say let's say the rent is uh, twenty two hundred dollars a month, mm-hmm. okay, and a person brings in half of that hundred, say I'll bring in the fifteenth. Uh, should that be charged a late? Uh, you know, because you know the rest of it has been promised. Uh, now, here's the other problem that the to if people pay late, they pay, uh, let's say on the fifth or whatever, and the half of the twenty two hundred, and on eighteenth or eighteenth, they end with the other what eleven hundred dollars. Uh, you know, then here here we go. It's half. Already leading to the next month. Yeah. Now you know they only have what fifteen days say to come up with the month 
property that's due for the next month. Mm -hmm. now, don't go like that. It's putting pressure on the people that are renting, on the renter, to be able to come up with the rest of that money by the end of the month. And a lot of times, they have to pay a utility. They have to pay some people notes. Uh, they have insurance, they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, utilities, you know, uh, and all that other kind of stuff. Grocery bills, all that. And some people, by the end of the month, the same yeah. process. And if something really an emergency comes up, they're going to hit behind here because they're running it too close. So, yeah. Now, to some of these comments here that I was saying here, um, Albert Citizen says, hey, Maybe our federal elected officials uh, can donate some money. Mm. They included Representative Cohen put themselves a raise during this pandemic. Mm. Uh, man. So uh, that's an interesting point right there. Mm. Jed says, thus a spike in crime, mental illness, as well as predatory lenders, leases and vultures, just taking advantage of what will be a whole new vulnerable market. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in reference to the story because, mm -hmm. you know, people think that you got more vulnerability out there because mm -hmm. of all that's going on. And I think this doesn't contribute to a spike in crime as well. Because if you got people consistently trying to do the right thing mm -hmm. over and over again mm -hmm. and getting over by all these systems, by, by landlords, government not doing what they promised to do mm -hmm. by their jobs for letting them go for whatever reason, um, and, and then you try to work and do the right thing, you better believe some of these people are not going to stay on the straight and narrow. Well, I'm not, it, it and puts, I'm not saying they should. That's yeah. what happened. But, you know, it puts uh, people under pressure to be able to survive. And, uh, they've got kids and families. And they've to... got kids yeah. and they've got families and things like that. And uh, these are some of the things I think some people are saying. These are some of the things the landlord should consider. Mm -hmm. Considering yourself lest you also come to the same situation mm -hmm. and you need somebody to have mercy on you. Uh, you know, so uh, it's a tough field. It's a tough area. It is. You know, and uh, if uh, uh, the landlord is consistently not getting his money, then it can be hard. Yeah, uh, and it's hard for both. Uh, uh, now, Kevin Gay, uh, uh, I think it's the first time I've seen Kevin come um, he says, dang, I shouldn't have bought a 80 inch TV. Oh, with that 220 emergency COVID stimulus. 2200. Yeah. Well, I say, what, where did, <laughs> you need to tell us what you need for 220 wow. <laughs> because that's incredible. Well, so, yeah. and, and he's got a point there. Mm. He's got, a point. you know, there are people you that folks blowing their checks. Yes. Some people that just don't know what to do. They're not, uh, they're, they're not, they don't know what to do. They just, you know, and then they, you know, they blow. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you need your rent. Uh, you know, your rent is, you're going to spend dollars uh, on a, what, an 80 inch, whatever it is, <laughs> television. Yeah. Uh, you think on, people folks. are really spending their Yes, check absolutely. On them. There are people that are doing that. And then oh, you man. want the Lord to have mercy on you, you know, because you felt you had to get this 80 inch television. That's not a need, that's a want. And if a person is spending that much money on a television, you know, my goodness, come on. Should the Lord evict them anyway? That's, that's <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, come on, man. On TV, I mean, man. I mean, no, if you if you go out and spend that much, yeah. that's not being wise. No, it's not. You know, you know, and just pay cash on it, and then you know you have your not your if you're mortgage, struggling. or yeah. you have your rent coming up, mm -hmm. and then you go out and buy something like that. That is stupid. That is stupidity. You know, that is crazy. <laughs> I mean, and 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 then when rent time come around, you want everybody to feel so happy on you and call everybody. So they can, can call the landlord and, you know, these are good people and all that. Yeah. Hey, I can say good people, but wise people when you bought that $2,200 television when you should have been paying your rent. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, that's not 
not a wise thing to do. You know, you owe the land or the woman or whoever uh, that's over your property, they're renting it to you. You need to pay them before you get a TN television screen. Go out and, and sell yourself and buy you a, a 10 or 12 inch uh, TV uh, with the knobs on it. Oh. You have to Control. Go find something like that. It's the black and white. Yeah, something like that. Set up on stand or something and look until you're able to buy an 80-inch television screen. Well, that's what they're using today. we got Well, you're going to stay up to date buying television like that, and you know you owe your money for rent, then, hey, if, if he puts you out, he needs to stay up to date on his money as well if he kicks you out. <laughs> Yeah, okay. no, that's not right to the person's money. You owe them and uh, to, for living there and then spend it on a $2,200 television. See what you you need to be out on the street. See what you done started, Kevin. You need to be out. No, no, Kevin, you know, hey, this is right. This is right. I mean, you know, this is wisdom. You don't teach people to uh, spend money on things when they need to pay uh, bills. you know, bills are the priority. You got to have priorities. I, you know, you owe uh rent if you owe uh ML light uh gas and water. If you owe them a bill, oh, uh, yeah, them a bill, and uh, they cut off and say, hey, to pay uh, what is it now? Three six hundred or thousand dollars. To uh, to uh, for your television not to be cut off, you better get down to MLG and W and pay whatever they say pay, uh, so that they don't cut your utilities off. Yeah, because they will. And if they cut them off, then you're gonna be wanting to make a big complaint. You want to go to the church and have everybody run down in the offering, get some money, and the pastors and everybody. Sorry for you because you bought a twenty and you owe Memphis Light Gas and dollars and you spent twenty two hundred television. <laughs> Memphis Light Gas bought all the Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I see you looking at me. Nine zero one one three zero and yeah. Let's come in. You were going in. Um, so I'm too, by the way, if you get not uh, that landlord just one of the reasons unknown to us. Mm-hmm. The reason he gave uh, was saying that she violated her lease because her son was living there now mm-hmm. and he wasn't listening to these documents. I mean, you well, know, there are people that do, uh, you know, and uh, I, I, that are more, yeah. will. Hey, hey, okay, everybody's living in the home. I need you to put their name on this list so you can know that they're living in the home. Now, mm-hmm. there are some lawyers that say when you rent the home, it's only for two people. Okay. Now, if you want someone else to live in the home, $100 a, a month uh, for people. All right, if somebody else wants to live in there, you have a child, okay, that's three then we're going to charge you an extra $100, $900 a month. Should, should the landlord be doing something like that? When landlords do something like that, I think they're now going to lose. I think they're trying to take advantage of people coming in the home. You know most of these people that are moving in these homes, uh, if there are two people moving in, and uh, you know most of the time they're going to be a third one because people have families. Yeah. And so to charge per other after per person after two people yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous you know that you know the, uh, you know that's something they threw in to make some more money uh, yeah that's just that's just uh that's crazy now check this out now. yeah yeah and uh, just to finish her comment here the last sentence it says her son was there mm-hmm. because his college closed due to the pandemic okay so originally he was not gonna be there other right. than visiting you know uh-huh. uh live there because mm-hmm. he was living at, at the college. Right. He had to come back home to where they were living because his college was closed due to the pandemic. But the landlord held that against them, mm. supposedly, 
because he wasn't on the original lease documents. Right. And then that was supposedly a reason to evict them. I don't know. Maybe, That's both. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe somebody could correct me okay. if I'm wrong. Uh, All I know could, is this is should <laughs> yeah. a person be charged extra for an extra person uh, one of, you have a family of four. Mm-hmm. Okay? And uh, for every how leasing for a thousand for two people say for two people and he's for each additional person it's it's a fifty hundred dollars more so you know if you got a have a family that's an extra two hundred dollars on a thousand or, or whatever at least or whatever okay so is that right for a landlord to do that uh and it makes it on the families uh what do you think? And folks are still coming in on comments here. Albert, uh, yes, sir. Great. Says yes because time is money, and uh, it's time. I, I'm going to go. Back. Did we read the thing where maybe you didn't plan the hard time? Do you have a six month emergency? Okay, six month emergency fund to live of, off. Okay, of when disaster happens. Uh, don't see it being honest that a landlord doesn't move the rent. Uh, it may not. Let's see. It may not cover you, uh, Tim. But uh, most landlords I know strive to obtain property without mortgage, and usually makes up the rent. Uh, over ten percent. Uh, up the rent. Okay, mark up the rent over ten percent. So, uh, threw the sick people out. So, and we read that. Absolutely. Uh, our, uh, Albert said, absolutely not. Landlords should bear the burden of. I ask the landlord look at their tenants again. Make sure everyone is doing what they can to. And so everyone wins. Uh, good point. Uh, okay. Bernard the uh, Albert says, "Oh, no! Being a landlord that has to take uh, mortgages out of a rental property is a big, big red flag for tenants." What do you mean by that? The tenant might well prepare if a property is uh, mortgaged. Okay, keep it okay. Uh, Carl knows what Bob is talking about right out of eight this morning. What a good Friday! Okay, uh, and can I go to some of these? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, now and again, it's a lot of Albert comments and more people coming in, so I want to update up to date ones, not to miss some of those older ones. Okay, let me just, know where you're starting at there. Okay, it, uh, it's, it's Albert, and it says because time is money uh, when you owe money. Again, maybe, and you just you know here uh, it says again, maybe landlords shouldn't be in the business they have uh, do under that debt. Hmm. So I guess he says maybe they shouldn't be in business if they have that much debt. Uh, they really need their tenants if they are not good managers. Corona and all these poor businesses. If you get a fee, I believe your system won't evict. But if you evict, late fees are all removed. That's interesting. Uh, he said, yes, they're blowing more than for hard times. Uh, and that's, again, the landlords. Okay, did you read it, Frankie? The landlord just wanted them out? Yeah. And just, I'm going back trying to make sure all of them. Uh, okay, and play it on. Okay. He says, Bob, some people are not good with money. Okay. Uh, they are very bad with money, and you're going to give it to them without working. That makes our government the enabler of poor decisions. All right. So Fenster says they be trying to keep up with Joneses. And that's what you were talking about, the TV. Uh, by the way. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Go back to Albert. He says, 
some people are good with money. They are very bad with money. And they want to give it without working. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some people are bad with money. You know, bad with money, then, you know, they get good with money. I mean, you know, you just, come on, folks. I mean, you know, just because you're bad with money, then the landlord needs to understand, you know, uh, well, you know, people in your are just bad with money, so you may not get your money. No. I mean, come on. You can count one, two, three, four, five. I mean, people know, know what to do when at times, time comes to pay their rent. That makes our government. Okay. Oh, wow. What was that? Uh, Stanley Fenter, okay. <laughs> they be trying to keep up with the guy. Albert Bob, 38 inch. So I can read them now. I to turn the lights back on. Never too late to make a correct decision. Well, Albert, I mean, <laughs> I mean, so, okay, you buy an 88 inch vision. So just in case the lights get turned out, you know, you can sell that and uh, you can get your lights turned back on. It doesn't make sense to buy an 88-inch TV uh, when it's going to cost all that money when you can have that money to pay your utility bill. You know, uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe you're saying something else. Uh, now, can I, can I read the rest of them? Yeah, There's yeah. only one more, yeah. actually, so. Uh, and again, it's Albert. Uh, he says, when those $2,200 checks came out, mm-hmm. I've seen many people, including me, pull out that money in cash and buried it away for later. What to do when money falls out of the sky? I hear pay bills, but I don't see that money helping anyone if they spend it. They didn't work for it. Devil money. I don't understand Devil money. Oh, well, you know, but I mean, you know, when they'll get again. Well, I mean, I don't know if I could. Well, I, I, okay. And, I, I, when well, $1,200 uh, check came out, I see many people, including me, pull out the money in cash and buried it uh, away. Okay. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, what are people? when money falls out of the sky. I hear pay bills. But I don't see that money helping anyone if they uh, spend it. Period. They <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> wow, excuse me. They didn't work for uh, devil money. Uh, no, it's not devil money. However, they get it if whatever they need to do they need to pay bills. Uh, good morning, uh, you, Vicky, as well. And Vicky is watching us. Thanks for watching, Vicky, and listening as well. What are you? It's 901 210 And people coming in here, listening to us, and uh, watching us as well. What do you think, uh, about uh, eviction? Should landlords be a little more merciful, uh, on evictions? Uh, some people say, hey, they pay. To pay, they let a person go two months without paying rent. Then does that mean the landlord has to go? Uh, you know, well, the landlord is not going to go two months without paying the mortgage because I'm not going to let him go that long. And, you know, that's just you know you're not going to be that long. Uh, there it is. So shout out to y'all coming in, Shirley uh, Andrews. Good morning to you. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. If ahead. I can, um, can we go to the next topic for? Okay. A let's go to the next yeah. topic and and uh, after the phone call. Call from Albert. Albert. Albert, you calling? Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you very much, Bob. On Good morning. What's up, man? Yeah. What's going yeah, on? So, hold on. Hey. Yeah, we're starting school back up. I got some people in here anxious to get their school stuff done. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I hope the delay ain't too bad that uh, this money coming from the government doesn't fix anything. It's meant to fix anything. It's just a stopgap measure. It's what do in Congress when they don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So they just throw me out the window. 
when we could have had a better plan to keep people's jobs going. Mm-hmm. It, it, it seems like this situation was a knee-jerk reaction that everybody has to shut down. Everybody. So if we could have really understood what was going through the nation with this virus, mm-hmm. we could have handled it better because I don't believe we handle it well at all. At all. Because it, if, if we're going from the virus to an eviction, you know, the chances of virus you it's here. We just don't know when you're gonna get it. Mm-hmm. So going to but you may live through it. You know, risk you take. But when you're renting, somebody a bit of money to cover rent for a month, and you don't have a plan for the month after that. Well, we're right back at the same situation again. Mm-hmm. That that makes me believe that that money coming from the government is poor decision money. It's like finding twenty bucks in the parking lot because you just saw this lady drop her pocket. You know, do you mean. keep it? Or give it back to her. You know, mm-hmm. to me, I believe in God. I saw that happen. The whole story. I know whose money it is. It belongs to them. Mm-hmm. I got bi- I got bills. Today, you know, but if I was to take that money and spend the bill, I believe would taint that money. That money would be tainted, and it's going to come with a whole lot of more poor decisions afterward because we haven't focused on getting back to work. That's how you make money. You get back to work. So, okay, what you're saying, least, so if, if I could jump in for a yeah. second, what you're saying is the um, the money given freely so is make people are not earning it, and by not earning it, it's counter. It, it, yes, yes. They don't understand what it's it's to be used for. So since since they didn't work for it, it seems to me the only way is to get people back working. Mm-hmm. You, you know, make anybody working six hundred dollars, get mm-hmm. them to businesses so that we could have so people pay their bills because it's nothing by the government. Getting with money all the time, you know, it's getting ready to come out. And is it going to fix anything? Well, I got to ask, Bob. Did the first round fix anything? No. Right. I mean, I mean look, it didn't hurt. Like, I will say this: it didn't hurt anything. Um, and at least to me, um, and I don't think I'm not personally going to be against um, another. But I guess my thing is, it's even that is really not enough to do anything. That's just my humble opinion. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do $1,200? I mean, for a lot of people, that's rent, or that's maybe half of some people's rent. Um, right. Let alone, they, they still can't pay their utility, the car payments, they still can't pay uh, electric bills, everything else. Most of that's going to go into one source. Meanwhile, Depending on who they are, they still don't have their job because they can't go to work. Right. So the twelve hundred, unless you're already financially stable to some degree, it's not going to do much for you. Yeah, it's not right. going to do much for people that are not financially stable, that don't have money, uh, save for that type of thing. It's just right. uh, Which... for the moment. Uh, and then you know, once the stimulus was given to people, then. Uh, how long has it been since that first stimulus? Months. So, you know, and then they expect you to uh, be okay with that. And now they're fixing, they've already approved another, uh, recently, another, what, 1200 mm-hmm. or 2000 yeah. or whatever, uh, a stimulus to, to come to a certain amount of people, uh, you know, and that type of thing. So, you know, yeah. uh, waiting that, period, that long period, you know, it, it just doesn't help. But it doesn't hurt, like Josh said. So, can we get it to we get more? Our our local representatives really need to step up all here and figure out who who needs to away because they're sick. It's okay because we're six months along. I know I had it. A few people have had it, and we're healthy people waiting to get back. Mm-hmm. You know, let us get back to work 
and start doing what we do. Maybe because an employment check, not a federal issue. Government only takes percent of your pay for employment. The state takes ten percent pay. So this unemployment thing is a state issue. Federal government should not be involved with that. That's the money for his pocket to go to a group of people. Mm. So it's there that anybody, it's actually shameful. If you're going to ask the federal government for unemployment money, it's your state that has the bank account for unemployment money. But that's just shameful. I mean, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm. That is, it, 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 it's not going to work. Okay. So, you know, we got a lot of de- people making poor decisions with money, and anything I could do to have a decision with money, a better day. Basically, every single saying, hey, you got bills, you, you've got things that you need to maintain, like insurance. That money is meant for that. Mm. And if okay. they're not te- if they're not preaching that message, you know, people like Walmart and Amazon taking everybody's bonus check. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, we appreciate. Hey, the- thanks for letting me talk. Yeah, yeah Albert, you're, man. You're appreciate welcome, you, Albert. We're glad you called, man. Yeah, appreciate your comments. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Enjoy Memphis. Yeah. Okay. Good places. Good times. Yes, Bye. sir. Thanks, man. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> one three six zero two zero. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then and, we're gonna switch to another side. Yes, yeah. And um, I'll just read these last few before we switch yeah. here. I just came in. Um, let's see. Shirley Andrews uh, coming in. And good morning, there are a lot of new people that I see coming in. Oh, shout mm-hmm. out to you uh, as well, and also to y'all. Uh, you can share this video also as well. To, let people know and join in on the conversation if you want them to mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jed says, can't just be on the landlord but accepting half rent or rent outside of the rental agreement in most cases is that if you end up in court, laws in our country will hold you to what you've been expecting. Mm-hmm. And it could be ruled in, that you, in fact, were the one who broke the agreement. Right. And the agreement may say... Uh, hey, you're ready to do on the tenth month mm-hmm. or the first or whatever, whatever it says. You you sign that agreement on that particular day. Then, uh, if you don't do that, then you're breaking the agreement that you had between the landlord and yourself. Point. And you signed that and said, "Hey, I'll pay every on the first or fifteenth or whatever the day may be." Uh, then that's saying that you agree to pay that on that particular day and some people say well people have hard times when that time comes they don't, don't have the money well, I think it was Vicky that said what I do uh, yeah, that's I the can't pay comment. read that what she said what do if I can't pay my rent renters unable to pay should immediately alert their landlords mm-hmm. housing advocates and property owners agree this is the best first Mm-hmm. Landlords are typically more willing to negotiate with tenants to reach out quickly rather than those who hunker down and stay quiet. Mm. And uh, if you and say, well, I'm not going to call them. Uh, I know it's past the first. I'm not going to call them to the uh, to the six. I know I have money by the six. You know, you never know what the landlord is thinking. You never know what uh, they're trying to do. Or they say, hey, it was and them mm-hmm. and uh you know at all and uh, especially if i'm calling the landlord <clears throat> between the first and the sixth yeah and you're not answering your phone mm-hmm. am i the thing if you're not answering your phone i'm thinking you're trying to avoid me yeah I agree you know that. so what what am i to do okay i uh, read the rest of her statement there. What'd she say? Um, she gave a couple more. Um, mm-hmm. and then GKP was asking uh, Albert, "Who is they?" <laughs> uh, Stanley. I was about to agree with the caller, then he jumped off the cliff with that <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> says Stanley. Uh, so thank you, Stanley. 
Uh, Vicky says Trump gave a two trillion tax break mm. to the rich. Unemployment money is guaranteed. What they do with that money is none of our business. They earn that money. Mm. That's uh, Vicky says good morning, my friend. Good morning. Well, you know, what they do with that unemployment money uh, is their money. That's their business. That's as long as they're they've got to pay the rent. Yeah, they can do whatever they want to do with it, but yet at the same time, they owe some rent and they getting that unemployment money, baby. <laughs> that check belong to the, uh, uh, the the person that you owe the rent to. You better give it up. <laughs> what are you holding on to it for? You owe that person. Yeah. You know, they can't do what they want to do with they. Uh, what the what is that the that that money that comes in, well, it's the it's the whatever you know you owe that money. You got to pay that if you owe it for your rent and your stimulus money coming. That's what it's for to stimulate the economy. And you need to you know your rent be stimulated. Well, I pay your rent. I, I pay your uh, utilities. <laughs> pay your grocery bill. You know, going to deliver grocery to your house. Then when they get there, say, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> I, I, no, they're not going to deliver. Not, uh, you know, you got to pay that bill before they even deliver it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so, come on. <laughs> GKP said, well. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and Jed, here, before we get this last one in, if we um, Jed said, the landlord accept these half rents mm. and partial payments. Then the law says you broke your own lease agreement. How about mm. that? Mm. Man. And if you force that family to move under any terms not agreed upon, then the landlord is in big, big, big wow. trouble. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that's the point. So if the landlord is in those half Well, rents, I don't know if they'll look at it like that, uh, but it is. I, I it know, down. I know, but yeah. I don't think you can look at it as him breaking his lease. I think you can look at it for uh, being merciful and giving the person time uh, to pay uh, for that lease of uh, rent. I guess it's you determined know. on who the judge is. Yeah, because you can you can literally go by. But the, see, if we, like, but you know, like you go by the literal word, right? And they say, well, literally, you know. But then that's that's well, up to the now. Now the renters and the people that act that way. Now they're making it more difficult for them. The people that can't pay now they're making it uh, 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 harder because now you're forcing the landlord to say, "Oh, if that's the case, then I've got to you know, mm. evict you. I've got to make you pay when it's time to pay." Because if I don't, if if they're me for uh, giving you more time, if that causes me to break the agreement and they're going to get me for that then I'm not going to be got just because I'm trying to be merciful to, you, to give you a little more time. so hey either you pay or you don't stay you know hey that's bottom line uh, Here, and um, <laughs> Vicky says and they don't pay the rent they suffer that's not our problem hmm. now GKP says good morning to Vicky uh, Albert says Tennessee will have a Four billion dollar rainy day, for Governor Lee. It's raining unemployment because <laughs> unemployment is paid by the states. Mm. Albert also says we don't need Trump. We got Governor Lee, who's been charging us but sucking money away. Wow. So is that why? So oh, Albert. Okay, so what you're saying is that's why a lot of people haven't begun their unemployment mm. because Governor Lee's put the money in his sock drawer. Oh, man. Who knows? That's yeah. a big old sock drawer. Okay, if that's the case, that's why are others getting their unemployment? Well, I mean, well, then you can ask why are others aren't getting I mean, it. Is, like, he, where, is where he, he putting half of it in his sock drawer <laughs> or what? I don't know. Yeah. You can't be too obvious and give nobody. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the G says, Jet, trying to find a loophole to bring the landlord. <laughs> LOL. Uh, Jet says no. It just determines what the law says. That's why these things have to be spelled out, even during pandemics 
moratoriums mm -hmm. on rent. Mm. Wow. Wow. Okay, uh, so what do you think, folks? Uh, it's, we're running up to the end of the show, and uh, I want to squeeze, and it's not the one with the uh, the child. I want to okay. squeeze this one in. You know what I'm talking about now? The pastor. Yes, if we can, because <laughs> I know this is the weekend. We're going back to Monday. Yeah, we're just about out of time. We could talk about the pastor. What, what's going on with this? So, pastor yeah. in, in Memphis, right? Um, and. He um he he's he got angry and he he let it out. Now some people you know you know pastors right mm -hmm. that, that you know loving tender hearted you know compassionate nah, towards <laughs> towards their that's <laughs> thing you <laughs> they love everybody to wake up and um, not this guy pastors are human too. Yeah, absolutely. They lie, they steal, <laughs> they cheat, they manipulate. Yeah. They feeling just like you got feelings. That's true. Huh? Does this guy? He can you think a pastor won't lie to you? You think a pastor won't do this? No, no, no. I'm not trying to do that. But you got to they're human. Yeah. Then you know. And he he let his human just, just like Jesus did. I mean, he was God in the when he was walking he met the woman at the well says he sat on the well to rest mm -hmm. he was weary from his journey Jesus got tired or oh, mad man Jesus over. got tired yeah. so I mean you know if if he got tired and it was, was uh, to uh, humanity then he's just gonna be subject to humanity he's gonna be subject to humanity. He's going to be subject to cheating and backbiting and all well, this other kind of stuff. So not saying that they're going to do that, but they're subject to it if they yield to it. And also violence. And violent. They're going to be violent, too. Some pastors <laughs> will tell you, man, you know, they don't know who they're with. Yeah, they My do. old man was flaring <laughs> up in me. I don't <laughs> Hey, look, and it is what it is. I mean, look, I, I'm not going to. That's a bad thing, necessarily. Mm. Um. But this was good, now, this particular story. But I'm not saying a pastor should be I, a pussy. Just lay down and just, well, I'm a pastor. I got to, I, you know, I can't. Uh, you know, you, a pastor's got to stand up just like everybody else. You're not going to let somebody come up to you and, uh, you know, smite you in the face. And, well, Bob, you know, the scripture says, you know, if they hit you on one cheek, turn them to them the other. No. I'm going to turn to the other one all right. <laughs> it's going to be right. Hey, you know, but look, hey, but anyway, go what, ahead. What I'm reacting to is this pastor let his violence yeah. out on a member mm. of the church. Uh, she just happened to be in her 60s. Mm -hmm. so, all that being said, I want y'all to and give us your thoughts. We'll be right back. Listen. Take a and listen. watch this. Yeah, take a listen. guilty today to an assault on camera. The incident happened in February at Greater Mount Moriah Church during a celebration of long-standing local pastors. This is the video. Pastor Keith Robinson is seen exchanging words with his 68-year-old church member and then throws her up against the wall. She suffered a chiller bone and bruises. Pastor Dr. Kenny Brewer spoke on her. She has pins in one of her Two pins in one of her legs that she'll have with a, with a crutch uh, for the rest. Of the She's still on a walker now, going to therapy a couple of times a week. Robinson's attorney, Mark Messler, says this was his first, his client's first offense, and that the video does not show the woman's behavior in hospital. His client's family and years leading up to that. And Robinson is on probation for 11 months and 29 days, and charges will be dropped. There's no further issues at a by court condition. All right. Yes, but okay. now the video did not play, mm -hmm. and I do not like that because I, I actually mm -hmm. uh, played it before the show, and for whatever reason, not playing now. But what happened was, uh, and that was kind of the important thing, was actually seeing the action from the pastor. Mm -hmm. um, and this was at some event. A matter of fact, where supposedly multiple pastors 
Mm-hmm. I'm honoring multiple known pastors in the city. Mm-hmm. We're there. And this lady, uh, I guess, was arguing, and the pastor's a, a younger guy. Um, and he threw her against the wall. Like, literally. This is a, she's, I think she said she's 68. 68 years old. Yeah, 68 years old. And he threw, I'm talking about, slang her mm. with both hands on her shoulders and threw her. Uh, I'm talking mean, about like a football player. Did, he owe, did, he owe, did she owe some ties or something? <laughs> Come on. I'm making a, I, I, I hope not. But, I mean, that was a shame for him to slam this 68-year-old woman. You know, I could see if it was a man. Yeah. I don't a 68-year-old man. Yeah. You don't want to do that, but a 68-year-old woman? Come on. What the? Now, according to a representative of the pastor, mm-hmm. he says, well, y'all don't know all the pain and suffering she passed and his family through. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, let's say that even is the case. Is mm-hmm. that, does that make this acceptable? Nah. Whether he's a pastor or not. I don't not think acceptable. that makes it acceptable for him to take an old lady like that six years old and mm-hmm. then slam her against the wall for whatever reason. Some people say age ain't nothing but a number. Yeah, there's nothing but a number. Now, all <laughs> age is. Age is more than a number. You begin to feel things in places you didn't know you had. Yeah. You start getting a little bit older. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, but no. Uh, no, no, that pattern. She got to have legs, legs and, and all that kind of stuff. That's crazy, man. Yeah. What do you think, folks? Yeah, and a lot of you are continuing your conversation. <laughs> Uh, uh, Stanley wants to see the video. I wanted y'all to see it. I hate it. Uh, the thing worked, and now I just don't want to work. Isn't there another one out there? Well, I'd have to load it into the system. Oh, okay. Oh. It, is, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I threw her up against the wall and that type of thing. And, and this situation was behind what? Don't know. I mean, it, it's, like I said, um, the representative for the pastor had the lady put the family of the pastor through years of of turmoil. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I know people can put people through stuff without physicality. Mm-hmm. Um, it's entirely possible. I don't know yeah. how. Now, now, to be honest with you, now there are there are some pastors, and they they are just as gracious as they can be. Yeah. Now, I'm really serious now. They're pastors. That all pastors are not so, I agree with you. Are demons. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying, trying to get to over there. It. But what yeah. I'm saying is, you know, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that they go through that a lot of people don't know. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, uh, ministers or pastors don't say what they're going through. They just don't want to bother people with what they're going through and just. Uh, and they, then. And you, you know the things that they did, and and that's why it's good for uh, you know, pastors, uh, you know, not to just keep things in, mm-hmm. you know, to release these things or to pray about. It or, whatever. or if you want somebody to talk, to, pastors don't. They feel like hey, they're I can talk to. Some pastors say that, and then uh, there's nobody. I can talk to. Well, all of these other, there's hundreds of pastors in this city that pass a church like you. Well, you know, if I tell Pastor, Pastor, uh, 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 if I tell Pastor French Fry, you know, then, uh, you know, the ketchup I put on it is going to be all out there, whatever the case may be. In other words, if I, if I tell somebody something, you know, they can't trust another pastor in the city. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. Pa- can't trust other pastors. Now, they will stand beside each other. They'll clap their hands. They'll fellowship and all that other kind of stuff. They'll speak in tongues together mm-hmm. and all that. But then when it's time to come for one pastor to tell another pastor some of his personal problems, another pastor, did, you know, I know myself. Pastor said, no, I, I didn't told me. I don't, I can't trust another pastor <laughs> to tell my stuff to. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, yeah, you know. So, uh, but why? And but yet, these people that 
people say you need to you need to uh, uh, talk to. You need to. And I'm not laughing. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Talk. You need to take them as your leader. They yeah. can help you. They can pray with you. But then there's other pastors that tr- don't trust other pastors. That's very true. So then, how can you tell people to trust in these people that pastors don't trust in in themselves? Pastors don't trust each other. But basically, what it boils down to. They don't trust each other. And, and should they have to trust another pastor when they feel that that pastor is not going to be, you know, there's, you know, but the, I've had people uh, yeah. tell some stuff on me. Oh, yeah. Get up and tell some stuff and, and say some things that they weren't supposed to say. I thought, you know, man, we cool, you know, blah, 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 blah. Confidence, yeah. Man, next thing I know, it was all out there. And tell you know sometimes you have to tell people a little stuff yeah just to stay on tell mm-hmm. and then you know what you know what the you're dealing with you're dealing with That's real. you know so but man uh you know it's that situation pastors are people and, people, and we must not forget that and think that they're supernatural they're That's not right. supernatural okay they're not god and uh and not blaming the pastor for not being God. He's just human. And he's only acting human. And they're trying to do the best that they can do uh, to pray to, to to be where they can hear from for you. But you've got to understand, we're a spiritual beings living in a physical body that is limited uh, to uh, certain things. When you're in a physical body, you're limited to a, a, a lot of things. You, you know, you just... A, a spirit can do, can go anywhere, but a physical body, you know, when Jesus uh, was uh, 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 in his physical body, you know, he didn't he didn't walk through a door. But when he uh, came back and he got his spiritual body if he was from the dead. He went to the disciples. The Bible said the door being shut. In yeah. other words, he walked right through the wall, uh, you know, having that spiritual body. But with a physical body, we're limited. You just can't walk up to somebody's door and talk about, I'm going to walk through the door. No, you run into that door and get yourself knocked <laughs> out. Uh, yeah, you, you're limited to what you can do. All right, go just, ahead. Just talk, last few comments uh, before, we, before we get up out of here. I know mm-hmm. it's getting close. Um, GKP says she paid her tithes. Oh, oh The GK. pastor needed that money. Oh, GKP. <laughs> Hey, come on now. I'm not going to let you get away with that one, man. Look, he needed yeah, it yeah, so yeah. bad, he threw it. He threw it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> That's not. I hope that wasn't the case. Uh, you know, and there are some pastors that feel that way. You know, don't get their money. You know, if you, if you, uh, you on a pastor's good for, for a while, you paying all your tithes and offering, and all of a sudden, one week you missing your tithe. Oh, uh, man. Oh. The pastor turn around and then you know people weren't as friendly to you the next week because you didn't give your tithe. You don't need to be there. Uh, you know, I'll be hey. honest with you. If a, if a pastor's mad at you, which you were supposed to have uh, done it, but he didn't, and then all of a sudden mad at you. I mean, it's not his anyway. Yeah, the tithe right. belonged to God. And oh, act against. But uh, hey, if they're mad at you because of that, then, hey, you know, that, that's a problem, serious problem there. But uh, at any rate. Uh, they said she was late with them tides. You uh, put E-S like tide uh, detergent. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. Jet says, I definitely want to see video. Let Bob discuss homosexuality while you fight it and set it up. Oh, would you stop that? <laughs> see there? He said, yeah. He knows it'll get you started. Yeah. Oh, man. See, y'all are crazy. All right. Uh, um, we get entertained while we. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vicky said, there's too many blemishes in the church. And she said, preach, Bobby. So there you go. Yeah. Which was the Anna GKPs you see last here. He says, get me my money. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kelly just came with a statement there. Not half, not some, but all 
all cash. All <laughs> my cash. Every dime of the tithe and offering. My church. Get here. But anyway, uh, you know, there are a lot of difference out there, really. And they really have a good, good heart and they try to do the best they can uh, um, uh, to uh, be a leader for God's people. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and just because, uh, you know, you know, some people say, well, they, they're, they're pastors. They ain't, you know, yeah, they, they try. Mm-hmm. They try to do the best they can. Some good, good people to all of you pastors that are trying, that are doing uh, the will, and and it is rough. It's rough. it can be rougher, uh, tough on you, and uh, that type of thing. Keep on, keep on uh, fasting. Keep on looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and God will direct you and. Uh, give you the peace of the, a peace of God that passes all understanding it'll keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus and uh, so you'll be able to do the things that you would uh, for the kingdom of God and uh, hey we're just about out of time we're out of time as a matter of fact mm-hmm. and uh, hey this is Friday you guys came in strong and heavy this morning with all your comments and everything uh, uh <laughs> You know, uh, Kelly, GKP says Kelly Reddick, pulpit. Pimp of the year. Pimp, pulpit, pimp of the year. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, Kelly, you, you've been named that uh, by GKP. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, Shirley Andrews says amen to what you were just saying. Amen. So. Amen. Shirley, thanks uh, for your comment. Thanks to all of you and your comments today. Absolutely. Good comments and participating in phone calls and all the other. So, hey. We're going to say goodbye for now and, uh, on this Friday, and then we'll see you again or talk to you again on Monday for another edition of Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh. And yes, have a wonderful weekend out there and be safe and, you know, do what you're supposed to do to make things happen. You know, don't be the person that calls Bob. You know, and that's the type of thing. But as yet, at the same time, be the person that, uh, you know, God will have you to be. That's going to do it for us. And we'll see you again on Monday for another edition of Talk Back Live with Bobby. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody.